someone was curious a while back about um, rigging up an overflow for a pond to get a little bit more water um, storage in the pond. So I'll show you what we did. This is actually rigged to a horizontal pipe that comes out and originally that's just all it was. Um, but we put an elbow on it and then this actual uh, piece of dryer vent, believe it or not, or at least that's what it originally was used for. And then we drilled holes in it so that we can have a little bit of overflow there that we can control to a certain extent. And uh, then of course the top of it is below the level of the berm here. So if things get really ripping, which they might, um, the water can go down there at a very rapid rate. We wrapped it in chicken wire, and one of the nice things about wrapping it in chicken wire, aside from the fact that it keeps some of these weeds and stuff away, is that I can come along here and just kind of wriggle it up and down, and that actually cleans off the outside of those holes um, and allows water to flow down there. So anyway, just thought I'd share what we did um, and you can see the outlet right there. And it's dirty water right now because I just cleared the um, pipe. It has continued to rain and you can see now what it looks like at the spillway. It's doing its job, it's going over. Um, it's actually having a hard time keeping up because you can see it's starting to come over the berm here a little bit. I think what we might wind up doing, if the storm continues, which they're saying it is, is actually moving the water that's going into this bucket, which is our spring um, settlement pipe. And then from here, it goes down here. Right now, this valve is off. If I turn that valve on, a lot of this water will get shunted around to our holding tank down there and it'll go out the overflow of that um, down into the creek. And I'll show you what it looks like coming out the overflow now. We are ripping. All right, the valve is on and what you might notice is that it's still coming out the overflow here. The reason for this is that when this goes an extensive period of time without having water in it, it gets air in it and you have to burp it. So the easiest way I've found to do that is to take my hand and I can actually already feel bubbles coming out. Take my hand and put it over that until I feel that section. And then when I take it off, there come the bubbles. And you just do that over and over and over again. It's called burping the line. And once the line is burped, water will more freely flow down this pipe. And I can feel that suction getting stronger and stronger against my hand, which means that it's working. This is our spring collection site. And uh, we have a video on how we put this in, but this is where the water for our homestead actually comes out of the ground at the site that we've collected it from goes from here down to that bucket I showed you. I'm awfully glad we plumbed in this overflow because it's certainly doing its job. It's coming out full bore down below at the bucket and it's uh, coming out this overflow which is great because it means that it's not going over the top of our uh, little dam here that we've built. And that's functioning beautifully. Can say hi? Hi. It's really nice to see the water coming out at this rate. It hasn't done that in three years since we bought the property. Um, and while water can present its own challenges, it's also a tremendous resource, something you always want to look for when you're buying land, I think. I know lots of homesteaders haul water in. That is not something I would ever want to do, uh, especially if you're trying to be self-sufficient. But yeah, winter, finally, 